in today's show. I'm recapping the one game, plus some news on Steph Curry, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. Of course, today there's only one game on. I'm going to recap that game. This might be the worst show that we do all year, but we're here. We're going to talk about it. But there is news. There is other stuff that went on. So, warning, should we? Let's get it on, Gilly. (laughs) Fair enough. Steph Curry. Talked about it yesterday, and I said, oh, I don't think it's too serious. A little bit more serious than that. Curry has a sprain in his foot, his toe. He is going to um, miss, it looks like, the rest of the regular season. (sighs) Might be three weeks. Regardless, Steph Curry, you drop him. All right, you, you can't, you, he's done. Like, that's it. He might come back and play 20 minutes in one game or whatever, like, or two games. You can't hold on to Steph Curry, which is really unfortunate. Obviously, we hope that he's back for the playoffs. Yeah, I, I think there's, I don't think there's any chance, actually. I personally, I don't think he plays in the regular season. I know you might have some hope in it, but you're just holding on. Again, if you've got an open injured slot, it literally costs you nothing to hold him there. But otherwise, see you later. Unfortunately, see you later, Steph Curry. Unfortunately, what do we, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Let's do it. Get that garbage out of here! TJ Warren's season's officially over. Remember Rick Carlisle in December? Ah, it's weeks. It's weeks, not months. He'll be back real soon. Weeks, not months. Turns out it was months. In fact, it's going to be like 19 months before he returns. Um, after breaking his foot, started January in 2021. So yeah, weeks, not months is a lie pretty clearly. I don't even know if he's going to play on this Indiana team. He's a free agent. Who knows what this means for TJ Warren. Glad that they waited until now to tell us that he was out for the season. We expected that two months ago, but yeah, no official confirmation until now. Don't expect TJ McConnell back. He's not coming back. And Scott Agnes, I think it was, um, Pacers beat reporter, said don't expect Miles Turner back either. That's not official, but he said don't expect Miles Turner back. So let's not expect Miles Turner to return. Isaiah Jackson, though, if we're going to talk Indiana centers, he's out with a concussion. So he's out the rest of this week. Maybe the start of next week. He's solid, but you can't hold zeros. So he's got to go. So you go and add Jalen Smith. Goga is questionable for tomorrow. So if Goga plays, he's a great add. If Smith is your priority, Goga's your next. After Goga, if Goga's out, like it's the Red Red Rooster probably. It's probably going to have to be Terry Taylor. Maybe Brissett, but he's just not that good. But you want Smith, then you want Goga, and then you want Taylor, I think is the order that you want to add those guys in Indiana. Johnny Collins out again. If you want to drop him, drop him. He's missed four straight. I think it's going to be five straight now. We don't know if he plays their game on the weekend. Um, He struggled in the games that he was hurt. Like If he was going to be questionable and play on Friday, I would have held him, but he's out. So where does that leave him for the weekend? This is all very individual as well. How's your team going? Do you need the games? Are you cruising this week and you don't need his game? I think on Sunday they play. If that's the case, you hold on. But he's out again. Very hard to hold. De'Aaron Fox is questionable. Donovan Mitchell is out tomorrow. Updates there. Fox hurt his hand last game. Return to action. But if you want to grab someone, grab Davion Mitchell. I think it's a really good ad. DiVincenzo is a good ad, but Mitchell might be a nice little um, ad that gives you a little bit of benefit if Fox misses. With Mitchell out and Bogdanovich out, well, Alexander Walker is going to have to play, I think. So we can look at Nikhil over there. Um, we don't know about Trent Forrest, but we do know that um, Daniel House is out with a knee bone bruise. I think that's going to cost him weeks, to be honest, and not just the one game. So there is an opportunity here for Alexander Walker. There is opportunities for maybe even a Jared Butler. But I think I will go Nikhil first over him. And that's where we currently sit with uh, injury updates and news for tomorrow. The college basketball tournament, it's on. 
You know it's on. You've seen it all over your TV today. So for all the latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline.net is the number one source for all of your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino game. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. BetOnline is where the game starts. Let's look at the most added players over the last 24 hours. I think the most interesting ones here are not the ones that were added for today. With one game on, there's a lot of Magic players. There's a lot of Pistons guys. So um, Mo Wagner added in 31% of leagues. Oh, yeah, it jumped up by yeah, 31%. Big number. Killian Hayes added in 15%. Didn't work so well for the Killian Hayes ad. The more other interesting ones, I think, are Drew Eubanks, who's up 9%. I think he's a strong ad. Markel Fultz didn't do much today, did he? Isaiah Stewart, that's one for today as well. People added Gary Harris, and he wasn't in the rotation. Uh, Kelly Olynyk for today. 4% increase for Jamal Murray. I saw a report that Jamal Murray might return next week. That is not true from what I've also been told, or what I've also heard, that that report was misinterpreted, and he will not be back next week. Even if he was back next week, it's like, what are you seeing from Oladipo? What are you seeing from Markel Fultz now? Like, you're going to get the same sort of level of impact I would expect from Jamal Murray when he returns. And is that something you want on your team in the fantasy playoffs? The answer is no. So people adding Jamal Murray, I don't think you're making the right call. Mason Plumley, look, he's playing well enough at the moment to be a 12-team league guy. So you can consider it. You just got to be aware this dude's like a 30% free throw shooter. And that's going to have a significant drain on you. And then Darius Baisley. I have skepticism that he's able to keep up this level of shooting because it's been ridiculous. But it's happening. They're, everyone's injured. Shea's questionable again for tomorrow. Baisley is shooting well. He's got a lot of usage. got a lot of minutes. It could blow up in your face. He might shoot 17%. But the opportunity's there, and I think we've got to grab him at this point. Like I'd rather chase a Baisley uh, than try and take that flyer on a Brook Lopez or a Jamal Murray or even a Maga Porter Jr. who aren't actually even playing. Whereas Baisley's getting the minutes. He's on the on a roll. The shots are going in. He's, the shots are going up, more importantly. And yeah, the numbers are pretty strong for him. Top drops over the last 24 hours. Jay Crowder down 10%. Yeah, I know he missed last game and he's questionable for tomorrow. That's too hasty. I wouldn't have dropped Jay Crowder after missing one game. Shane Goon down 9%. He's playing a little bit more, but I still don't think he's a 12-team league guy. Kaminga down 9 Yeah, I don't. Um, I didn't talk about this with a Steph Curry injury. I talked about dropping him, because I think I spoke about it earlier today. I don't actually think there's a strong ad. Like, if Jordan Poole's available, obviously you add him. Johnny Kaminga's been dropped in 9%. He might get more usage. Moody is dealing with a shoulder injury. He might get more. Peyton might get more. But I think you're going to have Peyton and Moody and Kaminga, who are all real fringy guys and not must roster. Otto Porter as well. It's really just big elevation to Jordan Poole, more usage to Clay, more usage to Wiggins. Yeah, I don't think that anyone necessarily jumps up massively with Steph out, who's not already on a 12-team roster. Kaminga's probably the only guy, so I wouldn't have dropped him. But of course, they may have dropped him before that news. Nick Claxton down 8%. Doesn't really makes a lot of sense to drop him after that game because Aldridge is out for the next couple, at least. Derek White down 7. Yes. Caruso down 7. Yes. McDaniels down 6. Yes. Roby down 6. Yes. Udre down 6. Yes. And Gallinari down 5. All of those guys are pretty clear drops. Yeah, Roby, we don't know what's going on with him and Olivier Saar. Jaden McDaniels is not going to play in the regular season. Caruso struggling and his wrist is sore. Derek White's doing nothing. Ubre's not even playing 20 minutes a night and Gallinari's hurt. So I think all of those um, I think all of those moves make a lot of sense. Anyone I would, I would question someone there are Crowder, Claxton and Kaminga. I probably wouldn't have made those drops, but I don't think I don't think it's going to be the end of the world if you do. So let's go into the only game of the day. So Detroit wins and loses at the same time, I guess. 134, 120. But let's talk about the depressed penis, who was like more like the elated erection today. Sadiq Bay, 39 minutes, 51 points, including a comical way to get to the 50 at the end. 10, 10 triples, 10 rebounds, and 3 steals. Shot 63%. 27 attempts he took with Jeremy Grant and Cade Cunningham out. Of course, there was no Diallo, no Frank Jackson. All the shot chuckers are out, so it was just him. And he did a great job with it. Um, 7 of 10 from the line. He'd been down. He'd been outside the top 200 over the last two weeks, Sadiq. And then he just blows up with this. But this was such a weird game. I don't know how much we take out of this game, to be honest. We got 30 minutes out of Elf Stewart. 
16 and 9 on 70 percent shooting for the flaming guy is that you mr stewart well who the hell else do you think it'd be Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. We got a very good Marvin Bagley game and a very Marvin Bagley, Marvin Bagley game. 20 and 11, that's it. That's Bagley. Um, no blocks, that's Bagley. Four of 10 from the line, yeah, that's Bagley. 47 from the field, yeah, that's Bagley. But he also added in two threes and two steals, which is very un-Bagley. So we just got a game, I guess. We got something good. He started in place of Grant. Now, I wouldn't say that he's a must-hold bloke. Um, now that I don't think Grant's going to miss more time. Well, actually, that's not true. I don't think Grant's going to miss the next game. I think he's going to miss more time, though. So Bagley's an interesting guy. Yeah, maybe, maybe a hold. They started Killian Hayes because Cade was out. Finally, they started him. He lasted 11 minutes before getting a knock to the head. He had five assists in that time and nothing else. That's what he is. He's a guy that gets assists. He's still got... Even if you added him, you're, sh you're pissed off that he played 11 minutes, but he still got you five assists, which is basically why you added him. Isaiah Livers came in, first up off the bench, and picked up... Two or three fouls really quickly. Only played 20 minutes, had five points. There is one more game for the Pistons this week, but on that day, you might have other guys that you want to use. But if you've used the ad to get the two or three games out of Detroit, guys, they play on Saturday again. Just hold through it. Corey Joseph played 31 minutes, 13, 4, and 7. But Saban Lee, with Hayes going down, with Cunningham out, Lee played 21 minutes. He had 12 points, seven assists, and three steals. They have been reluctant to play Saban Lee of late, preferring to play Corey Joseph, of course. Um, if, if Hayes misses more time and Diallo and Jackson and Cunningham, let's see, four guards were out for Lee to get this playing time. But he is a guy that can produce numbers. Even with everyone out here, though, Kelly Olenek played only 19. Nine points, two threes, steal on the block. Obviously, value's not there. But if you, again, if you added him, you're going to get one free game out of him by holding him through for Saturday without wasting an ad. So I probably would do that. We've got 18 Jamorco Pickett minutes. 18 Jamorco Pickett minutes. Think about that. For the Magic... Truma was out. Jalen Suggs was out. Wendell Carter was out. They started flaming Mo Wagner, and that deserves a song. Yeah, Mo Wagner just continued doing what he's been doing. 29 minutes, 16 and 5. Three assists and a steal. Yes, two guys who'll probably play ahead of him were out in Carter and Akiki, but he's been strong. Strong enough to at least consider as a stream. Franz Wagner, who um, has been slumping, Shout out to the rookie wall. 26 points in 31 minutes with five rebounds and two threes on 67%, while Cole Anthony had 12, 5, and 7. Uh, Bumba only played 25 minutes, which he would have hoped for more considering who was out, but 10 and 12 is okay enough to get it done. And Terrence Ross had 17 in 23 minutes. Rossi hit two triples, but he won't play next game. They'll put Gary Harris in. They're just going to rotate those guys through that same role. Hampton started, and honestly, he's actually really bad. Um, eight points on 11 shots. I don't think he's done anything really positive at all. Well, Markel Fultz, not his best night. He had, what, five or six turnovers, I think. He had 11, five, and five. Again, much like when talking about Alinek, talking about Livers, if you added him because of the schedule this week, you hold for the last game. But after that, he's not going to be a 12-team league hold. He's going to be more like a Killian Hayes player, a guy that you can stream in for his assists, but that's really about it. The upside with the minutes limits on him... I don't think are going to be particularly high. We've got 21 minutes from Admiral Schofield, 7 and 5 there, and then uh, yeah, 16 Robin Lopez minutes and 16 Iggy Brazdakis minutes for those of you who are in the uh, in the Brazdakis business, which I hope is absolutely none of you. But if you're in the business of getting yourself healthy and taking control of your immune system and don't want to have to take hundreds of dollars worth of supplements and capsules and pills every day, then... Athletic Greens is here for you. I started taking Athletic Greens because I knew that I needed to get healthier. I needed to get some of these greens and superfoods and vitamins and minerals into my day. And this is the easiest way to do it. It's one scoop. It's like less than three bucks a day. One scoop in a glass of water. And that's it. It just really helps to boost up your general well-being, your immune system. I, I, I love these things. I love these green powers. Because again, it's hard to get a bunch of fresh veggies and fruits into your body at all times, the amount that you need to keep yourself going. And this is exactly what Athletic Greens does for you. So it's a great time to reclaim your health and your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. And all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NBA network. That is athleticgreens.com slash NBA network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And if you're looking for those protein bars, because you're getting healthy now, you've got Athletic Greens, you're going to the gym, you want protein bars, but you don't want the ones that taste like garbage. 
So you get yourself Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever and can also double as a healthy snack. So instead of reaching for a candy bar, you reach for a Built Bar because they taste great, but they're low in calories, they're low in fat, they're low in sugar, but there's like 17 grams of protein in each one of these bars. My my bars are on their way. They're getting shipped. Hopefully next week we're getting them out here and I can't wait to get some Built Bars to open live with you. You're going to see me absolutely just devour these blokes. They are fantastic. So go to Built.com and use our code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 to save 15% off your order of Built Bar. Built Bar is, like me, built different. Let's go and talk about the... Well, we're done. Jesus, I can't... This day is throwing me off completely. Let's go to the lines of the night. You're monstrous. Well, you're going to be shocked here. It's Sadiq Bay. The waiver wire line of the night is Saban Lee. Your young gun of the night is Sadiq Bay. And I'm not going to give a dud of the night when two teams played. Was anyone that was actually bad that was rostered in a ton of leagues? Not really. No doubt of the night. Let's go to the top 10 players. Sadiq Bey, Saban Lee, Franz Wagner, Isaiah Stewart, Cole Anthony, Mo Bumba, Corey Joseph, Marvin Bagley, Mo Wagner, and Terry Ross. Your top 10 players, Ross in under 50% of leagues. Again, just hold on to these guys if you did happen to add them because of, of the schedule benefit you get here. So Saban Lee, Corey Joseph, Mo Wagner, Terrence, uh, Terrence Ross I probably wouldn't hold on to, Kelly Linux, Schofield, Pickett, Magruder, Hampton, and Livers. If you added any of those to stream in today, especially Livers, Hampton, Linux, Wagner, Joseph, I would hold them for their one more game this week because it doesn't cost you an additional ad. And then to round out one of the shorter shows that I've done all year, probably the shortest, we're going to look at the top 10 players in points leagues. Sadiq Bay, Marvin Bagley, Franz Wagner, Saban Lee, Isaiah Stewart, Cole Anthony, Mo Wagner, Mo Bumba, Corey Joseph, and Terrence Ross. And that, We'll do it. Why is that happening? Didn't want that transition. Um, and that, guys, will do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you are here on YouTube, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave your comments down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.